It is not a dog at all. It is a spotted hyena enjoying her breakfast. A very good morning to all of you and welcome on a, what has been so far a truly exciting sunrise safari. And we are continuing along a very similar vein. Since every time I've been to the hyena den in the recent past, it has been completely quiet. And now we've got a hyena enjoying what looks like might be a buffalo leg. I'm not 100% sure. It's a little bit manky. My name is Jamie and this morning for the first time in a long time I have Jean-Dre on camera with me and we're sitting at the hyena den. Don't forget to send through your questions. We've got such perfect examples of two top predators this morning. Don't forget to send through your questions. Let me duck my head out of the way on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter and hopefully the presence of the crunching will encourage. Oh here comes another hyena. Hello, hello. Where have you come from? I'm not going to reposition now. I think this hyena will make itself visible in a bit. Because Ribbon is actually quite skittish. Come on. Don't you want to go and investigate? All right, let's move forward because we can't see anything. Hopefully Ribbon is quite tolerant. She hasn't lifted her head, so I think we're okay. watch the way that this interaction plays out but Tristan won't have those dogs for much longer let's go back to him I do have the mortal enemy of the wild dogs and Tristan I would say that you've had a good start to the morning it's been quite a spectacular start I would say we are still with ribbon and I've changed my mind about what she's eating I think she's eating a wildebeest leg and actually that makes far more sense because I don't know where on earth she would have even managed to find a buffalo to eat one so she's scavenging off something that she's, you know, that famous old tale in all of the old textbooks, spotted hyenas don't bring food back to the den site. I uh, beg to differ. We're right here. She's, she hasn't brought it back for the cubs, though. This is purely for her. And that male that trotted through earlier decided, took one look at her and decided that actually he wasn't going to even begin to try and come between her and her leg of something which is very typical spotted hyena behavior. The males are always subservient to the females. Oh. Look at that, look at the power of her jaw. You can actually see the marrow inside that bone. And you understand why hyenas are adapted to do what they do in the way that they have that powerful, powerful jaw. That can, look at that. Imagine the bite force required to do that and now lapping up all of the good stuff that's in the long bones. She'd eaten away all of the meat on the side and now she's crunched right into the center. And the long bones, of course, of all animals, all mammals, producing red blood cells, white blood cells in certain, to a certain degree. So that marrow is so full of nutrients and now she's lapping it up. Really, only a lion, I think, would have been able to snap open that bone in the way that she just did. It's a, quite a thin bone. She's looking, listening, making sure that her food is not going to be touched by anybody else. We heard them whooping earlier. That's why we rushed through to the hyena den. And now we sit and wait patiently for Ribbon to finish off her meal and then hopefully go and call out at least one cub, if not both cubs. You never know. I remember sitting in den sites before and only seeing one cub for days at a time and then all of a sudden the second cub made an appearance. I'm still not 100% convinced that Ribbon's lost her second cub. I'm waiting to, waiting to see. I would have expected to move den sites. Personally, I think Ribbon's a very pretty hyena. She's a good looking girl. Right, we're struggling a little bit. Fight them off, send you across to James. Which she's still tucking into with great relish. 
We've been spoiled this week. Exciting news. The guys have not going to give away a supply. Gano, I was trying to track him, but unfortunately, our vehicle's playing up a little bit this morning. The gremlins have jumped in the back with us. But we're very fortunate to have hyena activity at the den once again. I would have expected her cub to be out and curious about what mum's doing. That's what I would have expected. With the crunching of the bone, I mean, she's here. If there's no sign of them emerging, I would have thought that curiosity, I mean, obviously they're not old enough yet to eat meat, but they might chew on something just to explore it. But perhaps the whoops of the male that I heard earlier frightened the cubs back into the den site. Uh, now, Canadian Emily, you want to know if Ribbon will bring other kills to the Cubs. The answer to that is yes, potentially, but not just yet. For now, this kill is for her. In a couple of months' time, if she still has this den site all to herself, or whichever den site she happens to be, then yes, she might absolutely bring bits of a kill back for the Cubs to feed on. Typically, the literature suggests that it's high-ranking females that bring food back, rather than low-ranking females, and I, Ribbon is not particularly high up, as far as we know, in terms of the clan's hierarchy. But there's no reason why, if she's on her own, she wouldn't. I also think a lot of that literature comes from situations outside of the Sabi sand spotted hyena. And I think that behavior is very different between, say, the hyenas of Botswana, the hyenas of East Africa, where Brent was telling me there's a clan of 80, and our somewhat smaller clans in this area. I imagine that their behavior will be, there will be subtle differences in their behavior as well. So yes, I would say it's entirely possible. Ken, ah, the question that we often get asked, because of course hyenas look like dogs, don't they? Our Ken would like to know, hyenas are part of what family? And the answer to that is they're part of their own family. They're part of the hyena day family. So the hyena day family split. Um, it forms under, what does it fall under? The, the suborder Filiformes. So it goes, it is in the same suborder as cats are, which means that in terms of evolution they are closer to cats than they are to dogs, but actually technically are probably closer to things like mongoose or something along those lines, because they do have very well developed anal glands, like the mongoose and the badgers and so on. Actually not, not mongoose, sorry, but something like a badger or a wolverine. So they fall into their own family, it's the hyena day family, and in this area there's three members of the hyena day family. The spotted hyena, the brown hyena, and the aardwolf, who's kind of like the black sheep of the family. The aardwolf is a smallish looking hyena with stripes that doesn't have the same jaw strength as a perfect demonstration. Thanks, Ribbon, that was delicious looking. Um, as its spotted or brown hyena cousins. It's an insect eater. I've seen once, one once in Manioletti and apparently other people have seen tracks of them around this area. I don't know. I doubt it. I don't think an, an aardwolf has ever been seen on these live safaris. But they do occur here. Good question from Ohai Bacon, who would like to know if the baby's jaws are strong enough to eat crunch bone as well. Not really, not yet. That doesn't mean that their jaws aren't particularly strong and I certainly wouldn't suggest putting your finger near any of them because I'm pretty sure they could still, potentially for a thin digit, they could probably break your finger if they wanted to bite it. So they, they do have strong jaws but it's not at the point where they're able to crack open proper thick bones yet. They might be able to nibble, scrape away at the side, but that's pretty much all that they'll be able to do. And they don't need to be able to yet. The spotted hyenas have such an extended period of lactation. You can see, 
she's still, well, you can't see now, but I was able to see a moment ago that she was still lactating. So she's still producing milk, which is typical. She could probably go on to produce milk for another year, maybe even longer, depending on the conditions of her environment. And there we go, that leads us very neatly onto Marcy's question, which is how old hyenas are when they start to eat meat. Marcy, they'll start to nibble at, there's another hyena. I think it's the same one, it's just doing loops around us. Very hard to tell in the sunlight exactly who that is, I think. That's a male. Looking at the size, a full-grown male, but a male nevertheless. Lurking around Ribbon, waiting for an opportunity to come and snuffle up what she leaves behind. So the cubs will start nibbling on solid food at about six to eight months. Um, and they could actually only be fully weaned at about a year and a half, potentially, depending on the rank of their mothers. Lower-ranking mothers will often take their cubs to the kill whereas higher ranking mothers will bring food back more regularly to the den site itself. Oh, you're sneaking up. Hyenas are very, very good at lurking when there's food available. If it, whether it's lions, whether it's leopards, or if it is another hyena that they know they won't be able to get the food from, they patiently wait and they circle around and around and around. We've seen it so often with leopards, with, hy with lion kills. Hyena makes an appearance, checks it out, goes away for a bit, comes back. Checks up on all the goings on around it. <laughs> Not doing anything, just keeping the perfect distance so that Ribbon doesn't feel at all threatened. And she just lifted her head a moment ago. I'm actually gonna try and just shuffle back ever so slightly so that we've at least got a view of her head sorry ribbon Chandra will you shout if the tree's getting in your way that should be good here we go as long as I move my head out of your way we've had a viewer ask before why we always duck when we see the animals it's because we get well, our heads get in the way of the camera not because we're de desperately frightening, frightened and diving for cover. You can see she's got a scar on her neck. And I noticed a couple of months ago, when I first started coming to this den site, that she also had a massive bite wound on her bottom. That's most likely from the other hyenas. And I think that there's a good chance that she's not particularly high up in the food chain. It'd be interesting to know exactly where she stands, because... Each and every hyena cub, when it's born, inherits its mother's status, but that's not an absolute. It doesn't necessarily stay exactly that way for their entire lives, and there can be some shifting around in terms of the clan's hierarchy. So it might be that she hasn't inherited Corky's status. It might be that she's got quite a submissive personality. And she's fallen quite low in the clan food chain. Our hillbilly safarian, that's also a question that people often ask. Um, you want to know how do hyenas eat bone without puncturing their intestines? Almost all predators can eat bone. Um, your dog at home can eat raw bones, provided they're not cooked. Um, your dog can chew on shards of bone because bone in, in its uncooked state is actually quite soft. It doesn't form sharp shards in the way that cooked chicken does. Of course, we all know that you've got to keep your pets far away from cooked bones and from cooked chicken bones. But all animals can eat bones. It doesn't form shards. Um, it, it looks like it forms shards, but it's nothing dangerous. Don't go that way. But then also remember that hyena have very, very strong stomach acid that essentially dissolves everything that comes, in, that comes into contact with it. Oh, Ribbon, that's not the way I wanted you to go at all. Not that that's my, your problem. Don't even know where she's gone. 
Can you see her there, Jandre? No, come back this way. What about your cub? She's probably already fed her cubs this morning. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds just to see if she returns this way. And while I do, James is still hot on the heels of Tingana.